back to another episode of Share News from Home. Today, we're going to be talking all things Bachelor. As always, I'm your host, Fiona Zaring, and today, I'm so excited. I'm joined for the first time ever with Alex. Tell the people about yourself and if you're a fan of Bachelor Nation. Hello, Fiona. I'm so excited to be here today. I am a huge fan of Bachelor Nation. I've been watching for years now and I just can't get enough. So I am so excited to talk about the Maddie and Peter and Kelly drama today. Well, as always, there's a lot of it. But before we get into it, if you're new here, as always, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future updates. Okay, so let's get into Peter firing back at Maddie because this is sort of a really bold move from him. Um, a fan account teased the interview Maddie did with the Off the Vine podcast, and they used in the caption the fact that Maddie revealed that Peter had texted her a few days before reuniting with Kelly. And Peter commented, let me just pull this up so I read it correctly. Maddie Prue, you'd think you'd have a little more respect for the situation, given we both know there's more to the story. I mean, he called her out. What are your thoughts on this, Shane? I mean, it's a little out of character for Peter, right? He's kind of been a little mm -hmm. more reserved when he uh, is kind of asked about Maddie or the situation. It's not really in his character, but he seems a little upset. Yeah, he really put it out there. What's so interesting is they posted this and he responded pretty quickly. So the question is, did he listen to her entire interview or did he just sort of react without knowing the full story? Because she really got into a lot in this interview. She did. You know, why don't we dive a little bit deeper into Maddie's interview? Because there is so much to unpack. You know, the first time she's talked since the season ended, which was on Caitlin Bristow's Off the Vine podcast, which is one of my faves. I love her podcast and Caitlin. She's she's hilarious. Um, so there's a lot to unpack, right? Seriously. So the first thing she said that I think is really interesting is she revealed her one regret from the season is not apologizing to Barb on After the Final Rose. Obviously, there was so much leading up to that moment, so much leading up to her and Peter being on stage. And I think that a lot of fans who had stood by Maddie, even they were a little bit confused as to why she didn't take that moment to at least apologize. Um, I think it's really interesting what she said. So I'm gonna read her quote. She said, I walked off that stage and I've never cried harder in my life. I was so upset. It's the person that I love's mom and family. I wish that I would have been able to process it a little bit faster and just be able to say, you know what? I'm so sorry if there's anything I did that upset you. So she elaborated on all of this, but I think what's really interesting is she basically pointed out how taken aback she was, how upset she was, and imagine like how hard that must have been so I do think that coming forward at this point and saying she regrets not apologizing is a totally nice thing to do that she kind of didn't have to, you know, like at this right. point. At this, I know. And, you know, on After the Final Rose, Maddie was also very reserved and kind of, you know, I, I think a lot of people, she surprised a lot of people in the way she reacted. Um, she was very respectful and kind of just, a lot of one word answers, you know, she wasn't really attacking mm -hmm. Barb. And, and even if she didn't agree, she kind of just kind of mm -hmm. made it known, like, I'm going to respect the situation. And, and this is unfortunate. You know, she looks sad, yeah. you know? Yeah, I think it was sort of one of those moments where imagine being on live TV, first of all, and then you have the added pressure of you're sitting next to someone who a, just went through the ringer with his ex-fiance, who now you're stepping on stage and trying to make a relationship work here. You know his mother basically hates you. I think that she, like you said, was reserved, was respectful, but was probably trying to process so much at once that she didn't right. give it everything she hoped for. So it is nice to see her sort of owning that and reflecting upon it. And all things considered, I don't know how I would have handled that circumstance. So she did a pretty good job. Me as well. I think I probably would have stood up for myself a little bit more than Maddie had. Um, but like you said, I think she was caught off guard. I mean, Chris Harrison even mentioned that 
uh, the room when he walked in, when he he kind of said hello to everyone when he walked in the room. And we, when he got over to Barb, she didn't even like smile. And so he knew that they were in for it. And I think that when Maddie got on stage, she was caught off guard and Barb was, Barb was putting up a fight. She was ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, she was she was leaving nothing unsaid. Um, let's circle back to another thing Maddie was talking about, and it's sort of like the root of all of Barb's anger or dislike for Madison, and that is the fact that she kept the family waiting. As we remember, her and Peter had that very dramatic, like do or die conversation in Australia. And what we didn't know until after the fact was that the family was kept waiting for a really, really long time. And that is why once they finally got inside, the conversation they faced and the reception they faced from the family was not what they were expecting. So Maddie also opened up about that. She said she was sorry. She understood where they were coming from. And she basically reiterated that she came into that conversation not knowing where her and Peter would stand. And she said that respect, she said, not with any disrespect to anyone, but I wasn't concerned about my family, his family, or anyone else involved. In that moment, my only focus was Peter and figuring out if we could move forward, if this was even worth fighting for. So I have always been team Maddie a little bit on this one because I feel as though how do you go in and meet someone's family and put on a good show if you don't even know if you and him have a future together? So I fully sort of understood that need for that three hour conversation. Um, so I like that she apologized, but still sort of stood up for herself on this one. What, are, what were your thoughts? How did right. you feel when that played out this season? I mean, I completely agree. Like, if you don't feel comfortable in a situation, I mean, meeting the parents, it's a very big deal. And when it comes to, you know, the show and production, I mean, at the end of the day, we have to remember this is a TV show. And so a lot of, you know, production takes hours and it takes time. And if they weren't kind of fully ready to uh, move to that next step and meet the parents, then um, I understand. And something else I want to mention is uh, Chris Harrison said that Peter is mm. just as much at fault for this as Maddie was. You know, so I kind Good of point. feel badly that they both were a little insecure about the relationship and where they stand. And so it took that much time because it needed that much time. So I appreciate right. Maddie kind of speaking out about that and uh, apologizing. Yeah, I think it was great. What's really interesting, this was one of the craziest, in my opinion, craziest moments from her interview. She mentioned that their breakup that everybody keeps talking about, you know, post Australia, post after the final rose, this like, we've been saying it ourselves, even in our bachelor recaps, like their 15 minute relationship because it was so fast. She doesn't even view it as a breakup, which I think is really interesting. She explained that when she went on that stage, they were not together. And when they left, they were not together. They were two people who recognized their love for each other and wanted to see if they could make it work. I don't know why none of us even considered that option. Like they, I think have been mislabeled and probably the, it'll be always this sort of thought of as this way is the shortest relationship in bachelor history. And in her eyes, it wasn't even a relationship. Like they didn't even right. consider it being together again which I just thought was so interesting. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting too. I think probably because, you know, we naturally want a happy ending. All of Bachelor Nation wants right. to see a proposal at the end of the show. And I think producers probably kind of, you know, egg them on to come on stage and be happy and act Absolutely. like this is gonna work out. So, uh, but that is very interesting that they, you know, they weren't even together. So you can't consider it the shortest relationship if you're not together. Exactly. Seriously, we could honestly talk about everything Maddie revealed for hours because this honestly was not only her first interview since this all happened, but she left nothing off the table. So if you haven't nothing. listened, I would highly recommend <laughs> But what we're gonna dive into right now is the Kelly situation, because honestly, at this stage of the game, I was not expecting drama like this to emerge from Peter's season. It's truly Neither crazy. Neither was I. So Maddie talked about how her and Kelly were really, really close on the show. And I think we all sort of understood that they were friends, they had a friendly relationship. But what's really interesting is she said she viewed her as her best friend on the show, 
thought they'd be not friends for life, but best friends for life, thought she would be in her wedding. I mean, like truly, truly a deep friendship that we didn't get to see because we don't really see anybody hang out that much together on the show. Right. Um, so obviously <laughs> she said she was hurt and thrown off by the situation, which I think was a given regardless of if they were best friends or not. Um, but what really seemed to sort of bother her throughout all of this is Kelly didn't reach out ahead of time. Kelly didn't text her and say, hey, Peter's coming to quarantine with me or Peter and I have reconnected. She just, they haven't talked in a long time. And one of the things Maddie made very clear is she would have handled that part of the situation differently, which I think I would have maybe handled it differently too. Um, me, me as well. It is very, Right? It is kind of messy and complicated. Again, it's just Maddie's side of the story. So whether or not Kelly thought Maddie was going to be in her wedding, like we don't know. But <laughs> thinking of it just from Maddie's side, I could see how that would feel like a bit of a snub, right? Oh, completely. I mean, if you kind of come away from this show, which is already an uncomfortable experience, and you kind of found this friendship and bond in one of the women there, and then she goes behind your backs, allegedly, and is dating your ex-man. I mean, that can get really messy. It's me That's the thing, it's messy regardless of how close they were or not. It's all so, this season is so messy. It's the only word for it. <laughs> um, so Maddie did say that Peter reached out to her after the fact. So to put the timeline into perspective, a few days before he was spotted with Kelly in Chicago, according to Maddie, he was texting her and trying to get back together with her. Then he's spotted Ooh. with Kelly in Chicago. And I don't know if it was the day the TMZ pictures went live or exactly what that timeline is, but Maddie said that it was on her birthday, basically, <laughs> that she found out they were together, which just adds another layer to the situation. Then Peter reached out and she said, but he sent an explanation, which she then clarified was more of sharing the situation than a true explanation. And basically, I think she was trying to say without saying, listen, good riddance. I, I'm not going to put my foot in my mouth, but this is what happened to me. And I think I have a right to be pissed. And again, I'm sort of interpreting that on her behalf. But when you put those cards on the table, and you look at it from her point of view. That's a tough birthday. I mean, I'm a huge birthday person. So if this happened on my birthday, I would be devastated. But I mean, if this happened on any day, this is something, this is just not a good situation having these two people, these three people involved in something so messy and her kind of finding out after the fact and Peter kind of, I mean, it's kind of a triangle. I mean, if he's still texting Maddie and he's hanging out with Kelly, I mean, it's just all not good. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's exactly how I would put it. It's just not going to be a good situation until they really all get some distance and settle from each other. Maddie said that she spoke to Peter about Kelly when they were still trying to figure it out. So in that couple of day window when they were trying to decide like, do we go for this or is there just too much complication, pain heading in that it doesn't make sense. She said, and this is a quote, I actually asked Peter about some of the things I'd kind of been hearing about him and Kelly while that, or while we were still trying to figure it out. Just that there had been hangouts and meetups and conversations that had been going on while he was still with Hannah Ann and while he was also trying to figure things out with me. I asked him those questions and I think it's very interesting because his and her answers very much contradict the situation that's happening right now. So that's kind of interesting and I would say pretty telling because first of all, we all thought it was very strange when they cut to Kelly in the audience and after the final rose and I forget what Chris Harrison said, but he said like, and Kelly's here, which is, you know, important or whatever he said. Right. Um, and then Neil there were all these rumors. <laughs> yes. Yes. What? <laughs> and there were all of these rumors about Kelly and Peter potentially meeting up when things were going south with Hannah Ann and you know, you see little things online, but I think a lot of people really were just like, oh, there's got to be no truth to that. So Maddie's kind of putting on the table, like, I'm not sure about that, because how do you go from not being in touch at all to quarantining together? And I have to say, it does seem pretty contradictory, right? Oh, completely. I mean, there is that rumor about Super Bowl weekend that Kelly and Peter were supposed to be hanging out or 
came across each other Super Bowl weekend, which is all the way in early February and in January usually. And so this has been going on for a while. And especially now we see them very public in quarantine. So Maddie knows that this, this happened, this has been happening for a while. Right, some version of it. There are, there are all these little breadcrumbs that somewhere in the middle of it, if we could just connect them all, we would know what actually <laughs> happened. So right. obviously I think the big question here is, where do they stand? Where does she stand with Peter? Where does she stand with Kelly? Um, she did say that her and Kelly have not talked in a long time, but she was very, very clear about the fact that she wishes them the best and she means it. She said, I say this genuinely meaning it. I saw something special in Kelly. That's why she was my best friend. I saw something special in Peter. That's why I loved him and wanted to fight so hard to make a relationship work. So they're obviously both incredible and special people. I wish nothing but the best for them, no matter what that looks like. I think that is a very mature stance to take on the situation. Even if she's a little salty behind the scenes, all things considered, being able to wish them well and recognize that maybe she and Peter weren't the perfect match. Maybe her and Kelly's friendship isn't exactly what she thought it was, but hopefully these two people go on and live their lives. It's a pretty mature thing to say. I, it's completely mature. I mean, it's very kind of graceful and just kind of how she handled herself on After the Final Rose, it's, it's kind of similar in the way it's very respectful and kind of acknowledging like listen this is not maybe the situation i want but it's okay and life kind of goes on and i wish the best for them and as she did with peter's family and barb and all of that so um i appreciate this response i do too so the final question i feel like on the table is what was peter referring to when he said there was more to the story because as we mentioned earlier, she really kind of spilled everything in this interview. So what more to the story could there be? Do you think there really is more to the story? Do you think maybe Peter just didn't realize that she had revealed that she explained he followed up? Like, is it just a miscommunication? So hard to tell. I know, it's very hard to tell what he means by that. It's vague. Um, maybe he just means that Maddie turned him down maybe maddie just kind of said like it's not gonna work out and so it's okay kind of that he's with kelly because maddie's right. over the relationship you know i i don't know or maybe i barb has been all over kelly's instagram all over instagram in general but barb is very vocal about liking kelly and so i think maybe maddie made that i think maddie was probably uncomfortable in that and and just maybe mm -hmm. wanted to be done with the relationship. And maybe that's what Peter's referring to. Right, right, that she was already out. So whatever, that could definitely be it. Um, you guys, we wanna know your thoughts on all of this. What do you think Peter was referring to? Is there more to the story? Were Kelly and Peter in the wrong? Are you happy with what Maddie has said and her apologies to the family and sort of her explanations for how she went through um, some of her decision-making processes this season? Let us know down in the comments. And before you go, make sure you subscribe because let me just tell you, I have a feeling that before quarantine is over, we will have so much more Bachelor drama to discuss. Ring the bell so you get the notifications. Uh, as always, I'm Fiona Zaring. And thank you so much for joining me, Alex. All right, thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Can't wait to do it again. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.